Hello, my name is Tata Malville, and I'm a research analyst on the Low Carbon Resources Initiative team at EPRI. The purpose of this brief video is to provide an overview of the colors that are often used to describe hydrogen. Chances are that you've already heard about green hydrogen, but have you heard about blue or gray hydrogen? These terms are frequently used in media coverage of hydrogen projects, in roadmaps, by vendors, and even by policymakers, especially in Europe. But to understand these terms, we should first take a look at how hydrogen is produced. Hydrogen itself, when used as a fuel, emits only water. And while there are no direct CO2 emissions at the point of use, the carbon intensity of hydrogen depends on the way it is produced. Pure hydrogen is rare on Earth, but large quantities exist combined with other elements. So to produce hydrogen at industrial scales, it must be extracted from hydrogen-containing compounds, such as water, H2O, and methane, CH4. Today, most hydrogen is extracted from fossil fuels, making hydrogen a carbon-intensive energy carrier. In fact, in addition to fossil fuel being the feedstock for hydrogen production in most cases, in many applications, fossil fuels are also combusted to provide heat to drive the production process, further increasing the carbon footprint. Production from natural gas via a process called steam methane reformation is most prevalent, but gasification of coal is common in some regions as well. Hydrogen can also be extracted from water in a process called electrolysis. Electric current is passed through water to separate the molecules, making electricity the energy input to this process. So, what is the color of all these hydrogen production methods? Is hydrogen created from electrolysis green since there are no direct CO2 emissions when splitting water? Today, the vast majority of hydrogen produced is considered to be gray or black, meaning it comes from fossil fuels. Blue hydrogen is also produced from fossil fuels, but with carbon capture and storage applied to mitigate emissions. Hydrogen produced from electrolysis that is powered by renewable energy resources, such as wind and solar, is considered to be green. And while there's no industry-wide consensus definition for these categories, what I've presented here more or less sums it up. So, where might these definitions fall short? To start, many do not account for the full range of technology options under consideration for production of low carbon hydrogen. For example, hydrogen produced with nuclear energy via electrolysis is outside of the scope of many definitions, as is hydrogen produced from grid electricity. Many definitions also lack CO2 thresholds. For example, there is no industry consensus on what amount of CO2 must be captured from fossil fuel-based hydrogen production for the hydrogen to be considered blue instead of gray or black. And since these definitions are just shorthand for the way that hydrogen is produced, they also don't account for its full CO2 footprint, including emissions associated with its transport and delivery. And we know that the carbon impact of hydrogen production isn't simply a black and white or a black and green issue. And this color coding approach is just one of many used to bucket hydrogen from the various production pathways. LCRI will monitor these various hydrogen classification schemes as they develop and evolve and communicate these insights to members to help them navigate the low carbon hydrogen landscape. LCRI will also participate in industry thought leadership discussions to ensure definitions and valuation schemes evolve in a manner that is informed by ongoing work and research findings. Feel free to contact me at the email address or phone number listed here with any questions. And thank you for watching.